She's in a dark alley surrounded by police officers. Jenna has her hands behind her back with her hands in handcuffs as the officers march her off to a police car. Her nursing dream has been snuffed out and tears are running down her cheeks. Will she ever be a nurse now? The police had badgered Jenna into doing field sobriety tests, even though she didn't want to do them, and now they've arrested her for DUI. She was just trying to pick up a friend who needed a ride home. She was trying to do the right thing, and now her nursing dream may be over. Once she's out of jail and back home, Jenna starts researching her situation, and that scares her even more. Not only is she looking at a DUI charge and possible loss of her nursing dream, but she's also looking at possible mandatory jail time. What is she gonna do? Thankfully, Jenna calls me, and together we put together a strategy for her defense. The trial date finally rolls around, and we both take the long walk down the courthouse hallway. This is one of those hallways that's not only long, but it's wide. It's so big, you could play a football game in this hallway. And so we make the walk down to the courtroom. The prosecutor won't work with us at all, and he is dead set on convicting Jenna of DUI. Thankfully, Jenna has the fortitude to reject the bad deal that he's offered us, and so her case is reset for trial. But unfortunately, it can't happen that day. We're ready, but the way the legal system works, a lot of times you have to come to court two or three times before your trial actually takes place. So the judge continues Jenna's case, and we have another couple of months of waiting. When the new trial date arrives, Jenna and I get to the courthouse and take that long walk down the football field size hallway again. We get to the courtroom, I open the door, and go inside. Unfortunately, now there are several hours of waiting until Jenna's case is finally called. When her case is called, I answer for her. We go up to the counsel table, have a seat, spread everything out, and get ready for trial. The judge asks, Mr. Flushy, how does your client plead? And I proudly answer, not guilty. If you've never been in this situation, you may not be aware of the flood of adrenaline that comes into your body when something like this is going on. I'm sure clients experience it and lawyers experience it too. It's the fuel to get through the trial. It's what, it, the fight or flight response, and now it's time to fight. In Jenna's case, the trial begins with the officer testifying about what happened on the night in question. I've already seen his body camera video, so I know what happened. But the question is, what exactly does he tell the judge? I'm furiously taking notes so I can compare what he says to what actually happened on the body camera video for cross-examination. And also that way I know and can remember what the judge actually has heard in this case. Then the prosecutor asks the officer about the first field sobriety test. I pounce, objection. Legal tip. Never consent to field sobriety tests on the side of the road. Unfortunately, Jenna did the field sobriety tests. In her case, the issue was that she was badgered into doing them. She actually did a really good job and tried to resist the field sobriety tests. But two officers in a dark alley late at night kept going at her one after the other about how she needed to do these tests and essentially it was the only possible chance she had to not get arrested was to do these tests. And now, the Commonwealth was going to try to use these tests against her and claim they were voluntary, but that was BS. I saw the video and I knew that they were coerced. She was badgered into doing the field sobriety tests. We argue back and forth for several minutes with the judge until he scowls out, I don't want to hear him. Wow, the argument worked and there's going to be no field sobriety tests in Jenna's case. That's a major battle we've won in this trial, but the trial is far from over and so we have to regroup and look towards the next issue. The prosecutor scrambles to try to rehabilitate his case, and he has the officer testify about Jenna's potential poor driving behavior and her overall demeanor on the night in question, trying to show that it was a good arrest for DUI that day. When the prosecutor offers the breath test certificate into evidence, I throw our last Hail Mary pass. Objection! The breath certificate has a spot for the defendant to sign saying they received it. In this case, that blank is empty. There's no indication that Jenna refused to sign or that she signed for a copy of the breath certificate. So that's our argument to keep the breath certificate out of evidence. In this argument, the judge's ears actually perked up and he really wanted to know more about this issue. This is something you learn quickly as a trial lawyer, 
trying to understand if the judge or jury is actually picking up what you're laying down, if they're connecting with your argument, and if they're actually interested. If they're not interested, it may be time to move on. But in this case, we had something good. The prosecutor jumps to his feet and tries to regroup. He has the officer testify about how they had placed Jenna's copy of the breast certificate into a packet of papers that was to be given to her. But the officers couldn't testify that they actually gave her the packet of papers. The only thing longer than the courthouse hallway is when you're waiting for the judge to make a decision that affects your client's future. Time stops. I'm holding my breath as the judge is thinking about what he's going to do. Is he going to accept the certificate and ultimately convict Jenna of DWI, which likely will derail her nursing career? Or is he going to keep the certificate out of evidence, which gives us still a fighting chance in the case? I frankly think we're about to lose. But the judge rules in Jenna's favor. No certificate is coming into evidence in this case. Without the field sobriety tests and without the breath test certificate, there's really no way for the Commonwealth to prove that Jenna was impaired at all. All we have is a person who was pulled over and got arrested, and we don't have a lot of evidence of any kind to show that she was under the influence. The case was dismissed. Fly the W flag for Jenna, and more importantly, for the future of her nursing career. To learn more about DWI defense and how to protect yourself on the roads of Virginia, check out my video on the Fair DUI Flyer.